Welcome back, everyone. Glad to be here with you this weekend. Hopefully, you're joining me the day this show, this show goes live on Saturday. Always appreciate your downloads, your reviews, your listens, your shares. And uh, again, thank you so much for being a participant here, learning about your own health, your own wellness, weight loss, or anti-aging-based goals, especially on these weekend house calls. So the weekend house calls is my opportunity to actually catch up with you in our community, listen to what you have going on in terms of your own health and doing my part to at least get you started on that road to getting well, to losing the weight, transforming your body, uh, and to living a longer, stronger life. That's really what it's all about. And because if we do those things, we have the energy, we have the zest for and vitality in life that allows us to accomplish everything else. Remember, it's not just about your health. It's not just about your body, but those things allow you to then live the life that you really want. Because when you have the energy, and again, I know I went 10 years without energy, 10 years of having Addison's disease. But once I got it back, I was a different human, and I want the same for you. So let's get into today's questions. You know, each and every weekend, I answer uh, six of our community's questions every Saturday and six every Sunday. So let's grab that. Today is episode uh, 2024. If you'd like to read along with the questions, you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2024. And um, today is debuting on August 21st. So today's first question, let's see. Because again, these are always new to me. I'm opening up the document. Uh, this one's from Ryan. Ryan says, I have two questions about supplementing chromium for blood glucose regulation. First, are the effects of supplementing chromium acute? Or if I were to stop, would there be a lingering effect due to increased stores in my body? If acute, how long would that last? One meal, two, one day. Secondly, would you use a... Uh, picolinate version or a GTF version or something else? Okay, great question, Ryan. So think about this. Um, if people want to better stabilize their blood sugar, there's a lot of nutrients that we know about that are actually scientifically validated. One of them is chromium. That's Ryan's talking about. Others are vanadol, vanadol sulfate or vanadium. Uh, another one is gymnema sylvestri, banaba leaf. There's actually quite a few of them. So Ryan, two things. Uh, I'll answer your questions for sure. The first one is I never recommend just using chromium in an ideal world because why just use chromium for when basically the same price or a little bit more, you can get all of these synergists like the vanadium, the gymnema, the gymnema sylvestri, which is an Ayurvedic herb, and, and many more. Uh, but again, I want to answer your question. So I recommend using, again, a total formula like gluco uh, support. Uh, and the versions of chromium I recommend are uh, chromium picolinate or chromium polynicotinate. What are the differences? Okay. They're both help. Uh, so basically, they're both chromium. Whenever you hear a, a funny word at the end, so like magnesium, um, <laughs> magnesium glutamate, or I should say uh, magnesium glycinate, apologize, uh, or magnesium lysinate, or uh, any of these other forms, three and eight, it, is that it's allowing the magnesium, it's bound to something to allow it to better be absorbed. Same for chromium, okay? So in this case, chromium is being bound to uh, picolinic acid, or it's being bound to niacin, which is vitamin B3. I like both forms. Um, in the glucose support that I recommend, it's uh, chromium polynicotinate. It's been shown to be absorbed really well to help with blood sugar, and it's vitamin B3, so a nice natural form as well. But again, I like picolinate, and I like polynicotinate. The GTF version is fine. I don't typically use it in my practice, and the reason is that it comes from Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a fermented yeast. And some people with glutamate issues, as you may have uh, listened to on my Tuesday podcast, uh, episode 2020, have issues uh, with um, yeast in general. And so that's why I don't typically lean towards that one. So the last part of your question was, does it, is it acute? Well, um, it stays in your body in an acute level, like most people are taking 200 micrograms per day or maybe more. Uh, but once you build up your chromium stores to a certain degree that you can actually find on your minerals and metals test uh, that it will stay with you until it begins to go lower and lower and lower. So it has built an acute and a long lasting effect uh, based on your stores. All right. Carolyn's up next. Hello, Dr. Brawl. I just wanted to tell you, I love your podcast and just finished reading your book. I'm 35 and have PCOS and I believe I'm a Kapha body type. I typically try to fast 14 hours overnight to help with my insulin resistance. However, I work 
twice a week and leave my house very early on those days. On my ways to work, I like to drink a little coffee, add some collagen powder to it. I know this breaks my fast, but I've been reading that consuming caffeine in an empty stomach should be avoided. Can this be impacting my weight loss or causing other negative side effects? Uh, it's a great question, Carolyn. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to I'm going to lead you to it right now. Actually, it's the first graphic. So if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts, so let's do it together because I just want to make sure because I know on the desktop, it's the very first graphic. But if I go on mobile and I click on podcast, the navigation bar, all right, it's not the first graphic. So you need to click on um, the right arrow three times and you end up, if you're watching this on video, with something that says intermittent fasting. So I have a whole podcast on intermittent fasting, and I would love you to check that out. Because, and another thing you do is this, go to stephencabral.com forward slash B-R-M-I, stephencabral.com forward slash B-R-M-I. Because for a lot of people, having caffeine spikes their levels of cortisol. And when they spike their level of cortisol, they actually break down stored glycogen, which raises their own blood sugar without even eating any carbohydrates. So you'll definitely want to check that one out. And um, for women with PCOS or thyroid issues uh, or adrenal issues or estrogen dominance, I don't typically recommend caffeine on an empty stomach. All right. Alex is up next. Hello, Dr. Brawl. I'm really hoping you can help me with the following. My 75-year-old, 74-year-old father won't stop smoking. He's been doing it since he was 18, and trust me, we tried everything you can imagine to get him to stop, but to no avail. The only win we had is to get him down to three cigarettes a day, but that's all he's willing to give us. He has high blood pressure, high cholesterol, but other than that, no major health issues. I would really like to know if there's anything he can do to reduce the damage that those cigarettes are creating. I love my dad and want to keep him as healthy and uh, as alive as long as possible. Supplements, foods, natural therapies, or anything that can get him uh, to do in order to lessen the damage. Happy to help, Alex. So, um, yeah, and so the nice thing is you got him down to three cigarettes a day, and that's pretty remarkable, especially for someone that was, sm if they were smoking like a pack a day, it's, it's, that's a big win. So here's the nice thing, is all of us, you know, usually add some assaults to our body. It might be processed food. It might be sit sitting too long. It could be being exposed to glyphosate on food, right? Pesticides. So what you want to do is this. You just want to empty the rain barrel. Is it rain barrel? In all other ways. So get him to do the daily foundational protocol. And if possible, add the immunity protocol on top of that. Now, again, he's 74. You might just start with even just a smoothie in the morning and then eventually add a little bit more and a little bit more to whatever he's comfortable with. But you definitely want to get some antioxidants in there. Seven to nine cups of fruits and veggies a day. Uh, again, depending on how he does, predominantly vegetables. That's going to help with antioxidants to help the free radical damage from the smoking. Smoking causes a lot of free radical damage. Um, and then you may also add in uh, products that help improve uh, glutathione production. Again, I don't know how he would do with the functional medicine detox, but you might just want to do days three through seven meal plan of the detox, and he does it for seven days that way, meaning like shake, plant-based uh, lunch, shake, paleo-based dinner, you can choose a, a paleo protein or a, a vegan-based protein, your choice. So there's a lot you can still do. Honestly, those are great things. And then if you can get him to start with very short sauna, because again, 74 years old, you got to start slow. Uh, but sauna, for anyone that smokes, you're going to smoke, you're going to sweat out a lot of those carcinogens. And that actually gets a lot of people to stop smoking uh, as well. So Alex, hopefully that's helpful. Again, just keep emptying that rain barrel in every other way, and that's going to help to compensate. Cynthia is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. How would you treat someone who has GI issues, smelly gas and bloating caused by dysbiosis? I did a stool test, which showed no candida or bacterial overgrowth, but lowered amounts of beneficial residential uh, flora. Thanks, Cynthia. Okay. So I don't know what stool test you did, but if you have dysbiosis and you have smelly gas and bloating, you most likely have uh, true dysbiosis. And so I don't know. I mean, Hopefully, you ran a three-day stool test. You, you really want to run a three-day stool test. And by the way, stool test is not the best way to look for candida. 
The best way to look for Candida is to run a Candida metabolic and vitamins test. All of these labs are available to you uh, at the best possible prices. They all come with a consultation. They all come with a plan over at equi.life, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E, or uh, feel free to run that with a level two integrative health practitioner, your choice. Okay, so, but let's just, again, I can't give you any treatment plans. It's not about that. Again, I don't know even what's, what's causing this, but if you have low beneficial bacteria, you're going to most likely use something like a clean gut probiotic and healthy gut support, um, and then switch over to the daily probiotic support. It uh, Just from the sound of your symptoms, though, it seems to me you need more like the CBO protocol, the CBO finisher, um, rather than just the probiotics. But again, I don't know because I haven't seen your labs. But that that's what I would do. Again, if it were me, let's say this was a client I was working with. I wouldn't go by the lab test. If you have all the symptoms of bloating and gas, I'd be doing the CBO protocol for sure. And then that's going to help to build back up your gut bacteria anyway. So that's what I would do uh, for sure. But if you want to run the lab, uh, a candida lab, you're welcome to. Okay. Tracy's up. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Thank you so much for your podcast. They are both inspiring and educational. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate that. Uh, your question is about diastasis recti. I believe this is why I have a bulge on my stomach that doesn't go away with diet. I'm a mother of two. The youngest is three. How would you recommend to heal this issue? Okay. I've worked with many, many, many women that have had diastasis, diastasis recti, whatever you'd like to call it, um, from the rectus abdominis mus muscles actually being pushed apart. If you're watching this on video, basically you have, you know, what we call the six pack, right? Well, in the middle of that, there's always a line and the line isn't special. It just means that the abdominal muscles are not right there. Meaning like the rectus abdominal muscles are not there below the mother transverse abdominis. And those muscles are part of the core. Well, what happens is, um, when you are pregnant, those muscles can begin to separate. They do that naturally. Okay. So now you've got your abdominal muscles, that six pack separated. And that's what we call diastasis or diastasis is recti. So the good news is that for most women, it goes back naturally within about six weeks or so uh, after delivery, after birth. Uh, but for some women, it doesn't. And it sounds like you had your baby three years ago. So obviously it hasn't. So what do we do? The good news is this. Um, it's almost always able to be overcome, like almost always, and usually through exercises alone. So they are core exercises like planks, side planks, boat poses, uh, bridging with marches in place, some rotational exercises where you're engaging your core. So what I would do is I would work with a muscular therapist or personal trainer that specializes in this because they're going to go really gently to help work on that. And um, again, it's not my first choice, but if really you've really done three or four months of this rehabilitation with core strengthening, which it really should work because I've seen it work, um, then there is always surgery to help with diastasis to fix that. Uh, but of course, I'm not recommending surgery, but you just, you, there is another option. I always like to give you all options. Okay. All right. I think we've got another question here today. Ryan, Carolyn, Alex, Cynthia, Tracy, Sarah is up. Sarah says, hi, Dr. Paul. If someone absolutely has to take antibiotics, what do you recommend they do afterwards, afterwards or in parallel? So their gut is not ruined. Thanks so much. All right. So I get this question at least twice a week, maybe three times. Um, but I'm going to answer it right now and I'm happy to answer it because it's very important. So sometimes you have dental surgery, you have hernia surgery, you have diastasis surgery, you have surgery and you may need antibiotics. Okay. So you take the antibiotics and you don't want to actually destroy your gut flora. You don't want to destroy all that good gut, for, gut flora that you may have worked on or, you know, maybe you haven't, uh, and you don't want to create intestinal permeability, et cetera. Here's what I do. Again, I can't give you medical advice. I can't give you treatment protocols. That's not what this podcast is about. Only your PCP and medical doctor can give you medical advice. I'm giving you what I would do or what you may want to look into. Okay. So here's what not only what I would do, it's what I literally recommend in my practice, but I can't recommend it to you because you are not in the care of this medical doctor, right? And so I'm not, again, I have to just state for all the FDA and FTC purposes, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor of naturopathy, board certified. 
I am not giving medical advice or medical treatment plans. I'm not providing any type of diagnosis. What I do is look at the underlying root causes. So what I do is I look at what would antibiotics do to the body? Well, it would disrupt your gut flora. That's what it would do, right? It would kill off a lot of the good and the bad bacteria. That's what it's meant to do, kill bad bacteria. And it kills good bacteria too. But what it doesn't do is kill off yeast, which allows the yeast to grow. Here's what we do. I use clean gut probiotic. I take two a day, okay? This is what I would do if I were you. I haven't taken antibiotics for many moons, and I wouldn't unless it was life-saving. But if it was life-saving, you have to do what you have to do. And so it's okay. So what I recommend is this. Two capsules of clean gut probiotic per day. That keeps the yeast at bay, and it starts to repopulate with good bacteria. And I would be using the healthy gut support, which is the glutamine, um, N-acetylglucosamine, the aloe vera, the zinc that helps to keep the gut uh, not permeable, right? To keep it from becoming permeable. I would do that for six to eight weeks, right? So typically antibiotics are a week or two weeks long. Um, so you just buy two bottles of the clean gut probiotic, two bottles of the healthy gut support, you're good to go. Um, you can take them um, six hours away from antibiotics. If you're taking antibiotics throughout the day, yes, it will kill a lot of those probiotics. It's okay. The Saccharomyces boulardii is still working, um, which is different than Saccharomyces cerevisiae that we answered earlier in the question. And uh, you're, you're repopulating with some good bacteria. Again, the bacteria actually works to a, even a smaller degree uh, when it is killed, but then you are allowing uh, not for the bad bacteria to overgrow or yeast to overgrow, and then it's already in your body as you're coming off the antibiotics. So that's what I would do. Hopefully that's helpful, Sarah, and uh, it's actually pretty simple. Clean gut probiotic and the healthy gut support, and you can find those over at equa.life, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E. Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you so much. And remember, I'll be answering six more of our community's questions tomorrow. Tune in then. Today was episode 2024, stephencabral.com forward slash 2024. Tomorrow, I'll see you then. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing weekend. 